I love when game series from my childhood get the proper love that they deserve. Luckily, Tekken and Tomb Raider just got the love bestowed upon them. Tekken 8's gonna get its own dedicated review in the near future, but I'm here today to talk about Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remaster, which is complete polar opposite of the Metal Gear Solid collection, which was blatantly a cash grab because all the games compiled in that collection weren't even the best versions floating around the internet that you could emulate for free. Haphazardly thrown together in a collection that had a little bit of additional album art and whatnot, but nothing that really kicked you in the nostalgia nether regions. Unlike that Metal Gear Solid collection, which I bashed up and down the block a couple months ago, basically calling it the next GTA definitive collection, just a blatant cash grab. The versions of these three games that you're playing are only playable under the umbrella of this collection, and they are fantastic. You can swap between the visual modes on the fly, just like the Halo Master Chief collection, not only in gameplay, but also on the menus, which changes the menu music and artwork. <laughs> oh, that was a good one too. Fuck, I'm gonna be busy for a while. Digital Foundry made a fantastic video. I will be using some snippets of their footage and that will be linked in the description below. I strongly advise checking that video out if you want some of the technical aspects. But just to summarize, you can swap between a remaster mode, which on the current generation consoles is going to be 4K 60. If you're on the little Series S, that's gonna be 1440p 60. The little Nintendo Switch will not glitch while running at 1080 60 or 720 60, Dr. Portable respectively. And there is of course a PC version, although there is no graphical settings whatsoever in the PC version, and that PC version is also what you'll be playing on Steam Deck, which also runs phenomenally as well. With this collection, for $30, you're able to play Tomb Raider 1 through 3, the absolute originals that came out on PlayStation 1, remastered, and be able to swap between the original graphics on the fly, and you have some new additional features, such as being able to save on the fly at any time, which you couldn't do in the original games. In the first game, you would get to checkpoints, save points, if you will. Second game, I'm drawing a blank here, don't really remember, and then in the third game, you would collect save game crystals and hold them as an inventory item. Not the case here, you can save on the fly, so if you gotta get up and go to work or something, you can save your progress. There's also trophy support, of course. So that is the biggest pro that needs said right off Jump Street, is for $30, you have a remastered, first playable here in this collection version of Tomb Raider 1 through 3 with enhancements to textures and lighting, and even some additional controls, such as Dead Zone and Stick Sensitivity, that is playable on all platforms, current and last generation, so Xbox One, Series S and X, PlayStation 4 and 5, Steam Deck, PC, and Nintendo Switch. And they all run phenomenally, PC being the worst version currently, but that's just till that patcher update. Having said that, rolling right into the very few cons that I have, first of all, the lack of any PC settings, any graphical settings whatsoever, I understand that it really isn't necessary because of how low the load is, how not graphically intensive this game is. It's super old, and even though it's got a facelift, it's still basically the same game. In fact, due to geometry restrictions, they use the same core game files, at least in the first game. Two and three, the developer switches it up and uses a different technique. I'm getting sidetracked and rambly right back on target. There is no PC graphical settings, which you probably won't need because even a low spec PC will hit the frame rate and resolution cap of your monitor. And that's how the game works. So if you have a 1440, 144 Hertz monitor, when you launch into that game, it's automatically going to have your resolution 1440p and your refresh rate 144 hertz. But if you do get any dips or stutters or it's not holding that targeted frame rate, it'd be cool if you could taper back some things like lighting, volumetric fog, and blah, 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 tessellation, and you know, yeah, graphical settings. But the biggest complaint, hands down, and the only one that I really have, because the fact that the PC doesn't have any graphical settings didn't affect me at all because I'm playing the PlayStation 5 version. But there is now an option in the settings where you can toggle between the traditional tank controls and more modernized controls. And by default, it is in the modern controls, and that's probably where a lot of gamers that are visiting the series for the first time are going to want to keep it because it feels more like a modern title. However, it, 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 it's broken. You simply can't. You're going to need to switch it back to tank mode, which luckily I've never had a problem with the tank controls of Tomb Raider 1 through 3. I know I'm in a really rare camp with that. Most people jump back to Tomb Raider and are like, oh my god, how, how do you control Laura? She's all over the road. I'm really not that hard, my man. Reason being, I'm not just telling you to put it in tank controls for no reason. It really does limit your mobility because 
because there are going to be certain traversal parts of the game where you need to jump up to a ledge and you cannot side flip or back flip in the modern controls. When you hit the jump button and then move the analog stick in the direction you want Laura to jump to, she does a regular frontward jump and then changes direction. That's not how the game was meant to operate. And in typical old school controls or tank ass controls, as they call them, when you hit jump and then left, she'll do a left flip, which is good for dodging enemy attacks. But also using that back flip is going to be integral to traversal, getting around the environment. Sometimes you're going to need to back flip against the slippery slope and then jump off that to grab a ledge. And you're not going to be able to do that in classic mode. Furthermore than that, combat is so goddamn basic and minimalistic in Tomb Raider, the original trilogy, that really all you need to do to put the enemies down to an early grave is lock on automatically and then jump around to dodge their attack, which you can't side dodge or backflip in the modernized controls. The first example of this I discovered almost immediately. This is in the very first level, aka the caves. Pretty much right when you walk in, you run over here into the corner, which I will say is super dark. If you press the pause button, it will switch back to the original graphics, which in this corner was so much brighter. You can actually see what you're doing. Since there's no flashlight, you can kind of just press the pause button when it gets dark. And generally the original game files were a lot brighter. So we're about to do some acrobatics with these triangular titties. I'm trying to jump up to that ledge. And with the classic controls, what you're going to do is press square back and then square again and then cross like this. Okay, I'm, I'm a freak beast. Now in the classic controls, you can't do that. Now over here in the modern controls, I'm going to try and do the exact same thing. See, uh, you, you see what, exactly what I'm talking about. Now, what the modern controls do is give you that analog control. So she moves around like that. So do you really want to sacrifice the actual function of the game just to have Laura be able to run like this as opposed to the tank controls? I'll show you again how it does not work. Let me line up the camera behind her. Cool. And then I'm going to. But yeah, let me draw my pistolitas here and start slinging some lead. Okay, I might have been a little bit wrong on that one. You can actually backflip and side flip. However, it is not nearly as responsive or one to one as in when you press the button, it's going to happen. Yeah, see what I mean? Like right there, I would have liked to have backflipped right here. I'm trying to backflip. Okay, she did a side flip. So it doesn't always do it. Sometimes she will just change direction and jump like that, as opposed to doing the right with right, right there. I want to do a back flip. It only works if your guns are out and it only sometimes only part of the time. So right here, you would not have your guns out because you're trying to jump up to this ledge and there's no back flip. I'm going to go back to the tank controls. Furthermore than that, there is no difficulty mode, which is no big dealio. There was no difficulty in the original game. Pretty well balanced, for lack of a better word. Challenging, yet you're not getting raped by every pack of bats and wolves. I will say Tomb Raider 2 and 3 are a little bit more challenging because there's more human enemies as opposed to animals. Beasts of the wilderness and plains. What I remember most were the animals. Ah, oh, the animals. Fearsome beasts of the mountains and plains. I seen a bear so powerful that it snapped a man's body in half. <laughs> Now, I have to advise, even if you are a PC player, to kind of steer away from the PC version if you have a console. The reason being, the console versions actually run smoother. In Digital Foundry's video, they did showcase there were a couple of stutters, a couple of frame rate stutters, which will probably get massaged out with patches and updates that get rolled out sooner rather than later, hopefully. But the fact of the matter simply is the PC version is the most choppy and least good experience until that patch or update comes out. And we don't have an exact date as to when that might be. And that is on the NVIDIA side of the house, as well as AMD graphics cards. They have a similar stutter issue. Furthermore than that, it's cool to be able to pop it into that classical mode, but you're not really going to want to play through the whole game in that mode, unlike Halo Master Chief Collection, where you can play the whole game in the original graphics of the Xbox One version. You're not really going to want to do that here because it does cut the frame rate in half from 60 to 30. So it'd be kind of cool to have those original graphics, but a nice smooth 60 FPS frame rate. That is really all I wanted to cover here. Not the longest game review, and I'm not really diving into things like audio design and whatnot, but just to summarize it, yes, I do strongly recommend this for $30. In fact, I would recommend this for $40, unlike the MGS series, which charged $50 and had the same core base game files that you could emulate online. The versions of Tomb Raider that you're getting are actually revamped for this collection and can be swapped between the OG graphics on the fly. And if you are a fan of the trilogy, you played it as a young lad or lass, and you want to revisit it, this is by 
far the best way of doing that. Just make sure you slap it back into classic controls. Hopefully they change that with a patch or update to where you can actually do side flips modern mode, but you pretty much have to put it into classic tank controls in order to do flips, which you need to get around. I already talked about it earlier, but awesome. Awesome collection. Tomb Raider was done right. Tekken 8 also done so fucking right. Quick video review like this one coming for that title in the near future, but by God, if you're a Tekken fan, buy that immediately. Thank you for watching my video. I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Drop in the comment section below what you think of Tomb Raider, not the movies. Well, shit. If you like the movies, go ahead and put that down there too. Angelina Jolie, she's cool. But we're talking about the games here all the way back to the mid 90s. Uh, did, did you play them? Are you going to play them now? You should. They're worth a play. Having said that, removing my nostalgia glasses for just a minute, I will say that the original trilogy has not aged super well. Still worth a play. Still recommend picking up the trilogy, but things like the voice acting during the cutscenes, some of the game design, what you're doing, running around, pulling levers, uh, moving crates can be a little bit boring and repetitive at times, but the overall experience of being Laura Croft, who is basically female Indiana Jones, it was a huge deal back in the 90s. It was a whole hoop of heap, heap of heap of fun and serving it up piping fresh in 2024 is also tasty. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. So this information will reach in a system as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly that subscribe button like it owes you money and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow.